let's take a look at loading the Ghost ESP32 onto the Rabbit Labs ESP32 S3 V4 board. This is Rabbit Labs EU board. And I want to show you how to load the Ghost ESP32 on here. There's also a little bit of troubleshooting I went through when kind of messing around. I actually ended up breaking the board for a second and had to figure out how to get it back to life. And I'll kind of go through all of that with you so that you understand what's going on. Most of the time I like to do whatever I can through the flipper itself, pretending like I'm out in the field, uh, mocking like being out in the field and doing what I can with just the flipper itself. So let's kind of go through that for a second. But to do that, you got to set everything up with the computer first so that you can switch things back and forth. All right, so let's look at the computer. So the first thing I need to do is go to the GitHub for Ghost ESP, right there. So I go to the GitHub and this is the latest release of the firmware. And I wanna scroll down until I get to ESP32 S3 generic, right there. ESP32 S3 generic. I wanna get that zip file and extract it. So once I've gotten that zip file and I've extracted it, I'm going to now go over to my flipper and plug it in. Because we're gonna take that entire extracted folder and stick it somewhere. So I've got my flipper zero plugged in and I'm going to go to Q flipper here. I'm in Q flipper and now I go into the SD card and I want to go to apps, data, ESP flasher. And I want to put that extracted folder. Now, again, that extracted folder is going to be called ESP32 S3 generic. I just renamed this to make it easier for me. So I renamed it Ghost ESP32 S3 generic. Makes it easier. I know what it is exactly in case I want to put multiple firmwares in here. In any case, so in that folder, you'll see once I've extracted it, there's three files. It's the bootloader bin, the firmware bin, and then the partition table bin. And I want to make sure that I do not stick it in the assets folder. If I stick this in the assets folder, it becomes invisible inside of the flasher app itself. I won't be able to, to use it. So I'm going to make sure that it's right outside in the ESP flasher folder. All right, great. So I've got that loaded in there on my flipper. And now what we want to do is take the flipper. We can unplug it from the computer now. And let's take a look here. So got my flipper. I'm going to go to apps, GPIO, ESP, I want to go down to ESP Flasher. I'm going to do a manual flash. We're going to manually flash this board now. I'm going to say that it's an S3 board, so I select that. My bootloader, right here. My partition table, again, there's that folder. And as you can see, that assets folder is invisible. Go to part table right here, partition table. Then go down to firmware A with the X10,000. Click on that. And here's the firmware file, ghost ESP underscore IDF. Now, oh, I forgot to do one very important thing first. This board, as you can see, it does not have a reset and a boot button. So I have to put this board into bootloader mode. And the way I do that, so I, you'll see I just went out, is I go to enter bootloader. So within ESP Flasher, I enter bootloader. As soon as it says waiting for download, I can go back. Now I can do my manual flash. So here we go. We're gonna put the firmware. We select the firmware. We're gonna go to the partition table. Partition table. 
the bootloader, bootloader, and boom. Make sure we did all that right. Hold on, bootloader, bootloader, partition table, partition table, okay, partition table. Let's try this again. There we go. And make sure I selected the correct firmware, which is gonna make me do it again. Okay, great. So I have everything selected correctly. Now I'm going to go to flash fast. I hit this. It's erasing the chip and it's going to reflash it. Starting programming. This doesn't take too long, it takes a little bit. So remember, you got to put this thing in bootloader first, bootloader mode, and you do that with the ESP Flasher app. Very important to do that. All right, this is the Rabbit Labs ESP32 S3 V4 board. No boot, no reset button. All right, as soon as it says auto reset, I'm ready to go. Now, I need to reset this board so I can either restart the flipper or I can go out and go to reset board. Bam. As soon as it says resetting board, I can go out. And now let's test it. Let's test this board out, make sure it's working. If we go into Ghost ESP, there we go. Uh, let's scan for some Wi-Fi. And you know it's working because uh, the Ghost ESP version, beside it, different than Marauder, it says waiting five seconds. And you can see we picked up a bunch of stuff. So it is working. We'll come back out. Scan Wi-Fi stations, make sure that's working. Yes, it is. Very cool. So now we have Ghost ESP on this thing. Let's go out and go back in just to make sure we got everything good. Oh, did it freeze up? Look at that, it froze up. Very interesting. Let's reset the board. and go back into the app and make sure it works. There we go, very good. So it is working, just wanted to make sure. Now, I wanna show you what I did because I was screwing around as I am apt to do and I kind of bricked the board a little bit. So a lot of the commands for Ghost ESP, the essentially the CLI commands, the command line interface, is very similar to that of Marauder. So I started screwing around and I was like, huh, what happens if I run Marauder? All right, let's scan APs. It essentially does the same thing, right? I, I gave it the command to scan AP, to scan APs and that's what it did, scanned APs. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, all right. We learned something new. It's, all the commands are kind of the same commands. That's interesting. Let's go back to Ghost ESP here. And when I did that, it just kept freezing. Even when I reset the board, watch. If I go back into Ghost, apps, GPIO, ESP, Ghost, it would always freeze up. I'm like, man, this sucks. Like, what's the cool point of that? If I can brick it so easily. But if I go into Marauder, it, it still works. It keeps working. So I was like, huh. But I, but I couldn't get Ghost to work again. So this is what you have to do, or what I had to figure out to do. There's probably a couple million different ways to do this. This is how I unbricked this board. Once I had Ghost flashed, then I went into Marauder, used it, and it and it bricked it. This is what I had to do. So if I go into Apps, GPIO, ESP, and then go back to the flasher, I have to reflash manually the Ghost ESP, but I can't select S3, C3, or C6. So I go Bootloader. Go into bootloader, part table, select the partition table, firmware. If 
firmware A. Select the firmware. Oh, but I did it again. I forgot to put this thing into bootloader mode. So let's go back and do that. Duh. Always go into bootloader mode, man. So enter bootloader. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to manually do it. So bootloader, bootloader, partition table, partition table, firmware A, choose the firmware. I go to fast flash. It's going to race it and reflash the board. I guess kind of incorrectly, it's going to reflash it incorrectly with ghost ESP. And last time I did this and I went to run ghost ESP, it obviously did not work, but we'll test that again. So this is doing its thing. And sometimes I noticed when I did this, it kind of had to run through it twice. It did it twice by itself. It like flashed it. Oh, okay, good. So it only did it once this time. We'll go back, we'll hit reset board. All right, now let's go into Ghost. Scan Wi-Fi APs. And look, it's telling me, hey man, you don't have anything connected to this. You can't scan anything, there's, there's nothing connected. So then, so remember, I told it last time I scanned it that this was not an S3. So now I have to re-flash it the correct way. So go into bootloader. Manual flash. Now select S3. Now go to bootloader. Partition table. Firmware. And a fast flash. Maybe this is the thing, the time that it did it two times. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Again, doesn't take too long. So everything was working fine until I decided to run Marauder with the chip flash for Ghost. If you don't do that, you're fine. You're, you're not really going to have a problem. But if you end up screwing up or bricking it in some way, you have to reflash it without telling it that it's an S3 chip, then reflash it again, telling it that it is an S3 chip. All right, so it flashed it. We're gonna reset the board. And now let's run Ghost, see if it works. There we go, now it works. So just to recap, this is how using your Flipper Zero, you can flash the Rabbit Labs ESP32 S3 V4 board. If you do something screwy to screw it up, we also went through the techniques on how to flash it to get it working again, and then reflash it with Ghost to get the Ghost ESP to work again. Just in case, we'll go back out here. Let's even do a reset and make sure Ghost is totally working. Go into apps, GPIO, ESP, ghosty ghost, and it's working, very good. All right, that's how you do it.